It's gonna be so good. Trust me. Ta-da! You live and you learn, guys. You live and you learn. I don't know if there's a science behind this, but you know, who cares? Welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today I'm super excited because I have another Korean recipe for you guys. We're gonna be making tteokbokki, which if you guys don't know what that is, it is spicy Korean rice cakes. It is a very delicious dish with very chewy and delicious doughy rice cakes that are delicious and spicy and flavorful. But today we're gonna be doing a slight twist on the traditional tteokbokki. So we're gonna be making rose tteokbokki, okay? So spicy rose Korean rice cakes. Yes, but say it with me guys, tteokbokki. You can do it, tteokbokki, tteokbokki, okay, tteokbokki. We're gonna be making some rose tteokbokki today and it's gonna be really easy and delicious. I've made it before and it was a hit, okay? If you guys want the kind of traditional tteokbokki recipe that's vegan, I will link my video down below. And also if you guys want more Korean recipes and Asian recipes that are vegan, I do have a vegan Asian recipes ebook. So don't forget to check that out. My Everyday Asian Recipes ebook is full of Korean and other Asian vegan recipes. Once again, link is down below. Anyways, let's just jump right into this recipe. Let's get started. Of course, the first thing you'll need, some Korean rice cakes. So this is not the traditional dry rice cracker looking rice cakes, you know, that we are used to in North America. We're talking chewy, delicious, doughy, rice cakes. You can find these in the Korean supermarket. They might be in the freezer section or the fridge, but they look like this, okay? So you wanna look for these, okay? These are very delicious, they're very chewy, and right now I have them sitting in some cold water because mine were frozen. So if yours are frozen, then I recommend just putting it into a bowl with some cold water so they can separate like so, okay? That's what we're working with here. I have 500 grams of thok. Okay, so thok is Korean rice cake. So I have 500 grams of thok. I'm gonna put it aside. It's sitting in cold water and we're gonna prepare the other ingredients. Now, another thing you wanna prepare, cashews. Okay, so I've got some cashews that have been boiling in water. Look at me being prepared. So these are softened cashews, my friends. So you can either soften your cashews overnight by putting them in water and just letting them soak overnight, or you could be like me and just boil your cashews, okay? So I just boil them with plenty of water for about 20 minutes or so, and then they soften enough for you to be able to blend. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a really quick cashew cream just by blending up some cashews with some water and some other things, and then, and then we can make our creamy sauce. Okay, so let's go. Let's make the sauce first. So I'm just gonna drain the water out and then we can blend up the cashews. All right guys, so this is gonna be really easy. I'm basically going to make half of my four ingredient cashew alfredo recipe. I'm doing half a cup of cashews that I have soaked or boiled and softened. So I'm gonna add that into a blender, okay? And if you guys want that full recipe, even though it's really easy and you're gonna see it here, um, I'll link the cashew alfredo recipe down below. It's so good. And it's obviously a great base for a lot of things, such as this. So we have um, half a cup of cashews soaked. We're also gonna add half a veggie stock cube. This is gonna add a lot of flavor, a lot of depth, and when in doubt, just add a veggie stock cube. Okay, so we're just gonna add that in there. I like to break it up so that it's like, I don't know. We're also gonna add some nutritional yeast. Now you can add, um, as much as you want. I will measure it for you, okay? But you can really add as much as you want. I'm just gonna maybe do like two tablespoons, a prox. Maybe, you know, two heaping tablespoons. There we go. Nooch. And then we also have some garlic. Okay, so you can use either garlic powder or minced garlic. I'm just gonna use like actual garlic. So this is pre-minced garlic. I'm gonna add, you know, I'm just gonna add like a tablespoon. Garlic is always a good idea, so. We're gonna add that in. And then all you have to do is just add some water. I'm just gonna do half a cup of water. And then you just have to blend this. Very simple. And it's gonna become very nice and creamy. All right, let's blend. So, so I may have added a little, not too much, but you know, more nutritional yeast than I normally do because it's quite yellow. I forgot my own recipe, fantastic. But that's okay because we're gonna add other things into this. It might become orange wait yellow and red is that orange yes <laughs> okay so that's gonna be the cream base i'm just gonna give it a little, little try maybe i want to blend it a bit more Woo, it's garlicky 
and delicious. I'm gonna actually blend this a little bit more just to make sure it's nice and blended because I want it to be like full on creamy. So let me just blend this for a little bit longer. If you do make this, just be patient. It sometimes takes a while to make it like super creamy. I'm gonna throw it back in the blender, okay. See you in a bit. All right, yeah, it looks a bit creamier. Delicious, mmm, yum. Okay, so now I'm just gonna set this aside for a second. So next, I'm just going to cut up an onion. I'm just using this one small onion here. I'm just gonna slice it up, you know. It doesn't need to be super fancy, just slice up an onion, okay. Up into thin slices, here we go. And now, you wanna take like a big wok or something. I got a big wok right here. Let's just bring this over. Hello, we've heated this up. I'm just gonna add some oil, just a little bit of oil. I'm just gonna spray some. And then, let's just add our onion, okay? Woo! That sizzling sound. Gotta love it. So I'm just gonna cook up the onion for like a couple minutes, you know, soften it up, you know. Now we can add some uh, minced garlic. Once again, I have a bunch of minced garlic here. Yes, we're adding more garlic, okay? Don't judge me. If you guys want a hack on how you can always have minced garlic, I will link my hack video down below. It's very important. I mean, this was store-bought, I'm not gonna lie, but I do have a hack where you can have this all the time because there's nothing I hate more than mincing garlic, okay? So we're gonna add some uh, minced garlic as well into our lovely wok. Lovely! And now, guys, we can add our rice cake. So I'm just gonna add the rice cakes like this, okay? And then we'll add the water after. I'm adding 500 grams of rice cake in here. And then I think I'm just gonna use the same water. Let's start with one cup. Actually, let's do two cups of water. So we do need to let the rice cakes cook. We're gonna start with two cups of water, and now it's gonna start to cook. So we're gonna bring this to a boil, like so. I'm gonna cover it up. All right, we're just gonna cover this up and we're just gonna let this come to a boil. Maybe I should've done this first. Yeah, do this first and then make the sauce because this is gonna boil anyways. <laughs> you live and you learn, guys. You live and you learn. Or you watch me and then you learn. Okay, all right, you guys. So this has, it started to come to a boil. I think we can just throw things in, honestly. I don't know if there's a science behind this, but you know, who cares, okay? So I decided to also add in some green peas. I have half a cup of green peas here. These are frozen, so I'm just gonna throw these in. Honestly, you can add whatever. You can just keep it really simple, just onion, but I'm gonna throw in some things to make it more interesting. I'm also gonna throw in some chickpeas for the protein, guys, because if you don't have the chickpeas, you just have a bunch of dough, which is great, but you know, I want a more filling, satisfying meal. So I'm gonna add in some chickpeas. I have a cup of chickpeas here. I'm just gonna add that in. And yeah, you can feel free to add in whatever protein that you wanna add. One of my favorite things to add in here is like vegan hot dogs that I slice up and it goes really well with this. So if you have that, I suggest adding that in. Otherwise, chickpeas, I mean, chickpeas go with everything, let's be honest. So just adding that in. And now guys, I'm already so excited for this. And now the star of the show, I have a giant tub. I have a giant tub of gochujang, yay! This, my friends, is Korean red chili pepper paste. If you guys have watched my channel at all, you guys have seen me use this a million and one times. This is Korean red pepper paste. It is a spicy pepper paste and it is flavorful, it is delicious. In Korean cuisine, we use it for everything, so <laughs> it is very important. If you are at all interested in Korean cooking, you probably have heard of this. So I'm gonna start with adding two tablespoons of gochujang straight into our lovely uh, wok, if it'll come off. It is very thick, my friends. So one other option, if you're smart, unlike me, is you could actually just add it into the cashew sauce directly. But this way you can actually kind of like, how do I say, taste it as you go, because some people have a different spice tolerance. So it might be better to kind of add it separately in case it's too spicy for you um, or you want to add more. So you know what, I, did, I just did three tablespoons. There we go. Three tablespoons of gochujang. Mm. Mm, mm. So good. Mm. So I'm just gonna mix this in. Mm. And as you can see, I don't know if you guys can see, but the um, the rice cakes are really absorbing all that water. It's getting cooked, it's getting nice and plump. Mm. And they're gonna get nice and soft and so delicious. And it's also gonna make the sauce a little bit more like saucy rather than liquidy. 
so it's gonna be so good so we've added the three tablespoons of gochujang. Now, this part is optional, but I also like to add some gochugaru, which is Korean red pepper flakes. So this is the flake version, or the powder version of gochujang, okay? It just adds extra, you know, extra spice, extra flavor. It's very good. I'm gonna add one tablespoon of that in here. Again, this is optional. If you like an extra kick, fantastic. Mmm. Oh, this. This. There we go, guys. Now we can add in our lovely cashew sauce. Let's just add that straight in. Ooh. Whoa, going crazy. Don't waste any of that sauce, guys. Scrape to the bottom of your blender, okay? Don't waste any of that goodness. I get every little bit. This is precious. Anyone else like me where it's like you spend like a pretty good chunk of time just getting all that Getting all that sauce! Come on, sauce! And of course, don't forget the lid, okay? The lid holds a lot Like a tablespoon in here. I mean, look at this. It already looks beautiful. So we're gonna mix this mm. Ooh. I'm already impressed <laughs> with myself <laughs> Go, we're just gonna mix this I'm gonna give the sauce a little taste. We'll see how it is. But as you can see, it's already nice and creamy. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Nice and spicy. The creaminess helps the spice a little bit to bring it down a notch. And it adds a nice flavor. And you know what I actually kind of want to add? This part, again, optional. You can just leave it like this. But I'm gonna add a little bit of mirin. So mirin is a... <sighs> Sweet rice wine. It's commonly used in Korea or Japan. It's basically a sweet rice wine and it adds nice flavor to your dishes. I'm just gonna add a tablespoon of it um, just because I feel like, you know what, might as well. But again, totally optional, you don't have to do this. Mm. Ooh, look at all that sauce. Mm. So now guys, I'm just going to let this cook. Now another option that you could do is you could add some ramen noodles or any sort of noodles in here and that's gonna add an extra, I don't know, level of deliciousness. So that's an option. Should I do that? Hmm. Should I do it? Because I feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of liquid, you know? So now I'm thinking, <laughs> this is what happens when I cook. I have a plan in my head and then I'm always like, mm, let's, let's switch things up a little bit. <sighs> do I want to add, do I want to add ramen? You know what, I'm gonna try a rice cake and see if it's cooked because the sauce will thicken up more and it's gonna become less saucy so I don't want it to be like too less saucy, you know? Mmm! 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 Pretty much done. Mmm! Mm-hmm! Okay, I think I'm gonna add ramen noodles. There's a lot of sauce and I have this like, you know, random package of Mr. Noodle, okay? So I'm just gonna add in, without the seasoning packet, just the noodles. You want to add the ramen at the very end once it's pretty much cooked because otherwise it might get a little bit too soggy, you know? Come on. Add this in. You can also add like udon noodles, rice noodles, whatever you want to add, really. Ooh. Ooh. And then if at any point it becomes too like thick, you can always add a little splash of the water. We're just going to let this just kind of sit in the sauce. I might add actually a little splash of water. I think I stepped on some ramen. And then the last little touch is, of course, green onions. I'm just gonna add a large handful. Woo! As much green onion as you'd like, my friends. Nobody is judging. And then give it a good mix. Mm. Ooh, I'm so excited! That was pretty easy, guys. Come on. Not many ingredients, and it's gonna be so good. Trust me. Ta-da! Rose and I've also added some more green onions on top 
And then I'm also gonna add, of course, the very important final touch, which is roasted sesame seeds. Mm. We add this, like Korean people, we add this on everything, okay? because it also looks just beautiful when you add it in, okay? So there you go, there is the beautiful rosé tteokbokki. Now let's give it a try. All right, you guys, I'm so excited. This is the final product. I mean, come on, guys. This is a masterpiece, okay? So feel free to add some salt. I might add some salt later, I forgot to add it. You do wanna give it a little taste, see if it's salty enough for you. You might need to add some salt, okay? But let me try it. Ooh, guys, look at this. Oh, I'm telling you, this, if you guys haven't tried tteokbokki, you are missing out, my friends. If you like, you know, carbs, <laughs> this is heaven. Okay, let me try it. Mm. I'm so excited. Mm. Mm. It's so good. It's so nice and chewy. Let me see if I can get some of that ramen. Mm. Mm -hmm. The rice cakes are so soft. They're cooked to perfection. They're nice and chewy and delicious. The sauce is creamy and spicy and flavorful. I don't even think I need salt. Mm. I'm telling you, if you make this for somebody, they will love you forever. I'm just saying. All right, you guys, so that is how you make rosé tteokbokki vegan. Super easy and simple. No need for dairy in this, just cashews. And it's super delicious. If you can't find the Korean rice cakes, you can substitute for like maybe gnocchi or something. So like something kind of chewy. And of course you can use the sauce for any sort of, you know, pasta even. But I really do recommend trying to find the Korean rice cakes, aka thok. If you go to any Korean store, you'll be able to find it, okay? Yeah, I really hope you guys try this out. I'm gonna have the recipe in my blog. I'm gonna link that down below so you guys can find the written recipe on my blog and of course don't forget to check out my everyday Asian recipes ebook which has tons of vegan recipes as well as a tteokbokki recipe but yeah don't forget to check out my ebooks and my other Korean and Asian recipes thank you so much for watching I really hope you enjoyed this video give this video a big thumbs up and if you're new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video bye three two one oh, okay what is that noise? <gasps> My fridge! My fridge! Uh, there we go. <laughs>